Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician, and on this video, we're going to summarize the three trigonometric functions that we can use to help us solve for unknown sides on a right triangle. What we gotta do first though, is we need to label all the sides on that triangle, and then we can write out our three functions. So remember with any right triangle that you have, you're going to first have a 90 degree angle, and then you're going to have another angle that represents your reference angle. Now that'll either be down here on the bottom where that angle is, I'm marking that as theta, or it could be on the top. But it's important that you identify where that reference angle is. You'll see it with a value. It might be 20 degrees, it might be 45 degrees, but it's important to identify that angle as your reference angle. Now, once you've identified your reference angle, the next step that I always do is I identify my opposite side. So to find the opposite side, I start at my reference angle, I start to draw a line away from that reference angle until I get to the side that is directly opposite of that angle. And if it helps you to think about it this way, I'm looking at the side that the angle opens up to, right? That angle of theta is opening up to that side there. That's what we refer to as our opposite side, or OPP. The next side that I always label first, or sorry, the next side that I always label second is the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse, it's just a, a quick reminder, in a right triangle, it's that diagonal side it's also the side that is the longest in a right triangle. And another fact that I use to help me identify is that the hypotenuse is always across from your right angle. So I always trace my right angle. The right angle is actually pointing you in the direction of where your hypotenuse is. And I'm gonna label it or abbreviate it as HYP, okay? So we have our opposite side, we have our hypotenuse. That means that this final side over here is the adjacent side. Remember adjacent just means next to. And that is the side here, this side that I'm writing out in green, that is the side that is next to my reference angle. Okay, it literally is adjacent to that reference angle. We see that this blue side here, or the opposite side, that is the side that is opposite of my reference angle. And finally, that third side that we identified is our hypotenuse. So be sure, whenever you're using a trigonometric function, label your triangle accordingly. Get your opposite side, write out where your hypotenuse is, label the last side adjacent, then you'll know which function to use. And we have three to choose from. The first that we can choose from is the sine ratio. Remember, sine ratio is always gonna be using that reference angle. So sine of theta, and that ratio is a fraction where you have the opposite side on top as your numerator, and you have the hypotenuse on the bottom as your denominator. That's our first trig function sine. The second trig function that we learn is cosine. And again, it'll be cosine of theta, your reference angle. And it's equal to another fraction, very similar to sine, where the hypotenuse is your denominator. But what your numerator is, is no longer that opposite side, it is now that adjacent side that is next to your reference angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and write adjacent on the top. That is our cosine ratio. Our final third trig function that we know is one that we've used for a while now. That is our tangent ratio. So we have tangent of our reference angle. Off to the side here, I'm going to show you what I first used when we introduced this problem. So when we first started looking at tangent, we looked at a slope triangle. And when we had a slope triangle, we were looking at delta y and delta x, literally the slope of the line. 
So we used to write this as delta y over delta x. But as you notice, I've moved away from those names. You're not gonna see me refer to tangent anymore as delta y over delta x. Instead, we're now going to use delta y as the opposite side, and we're gonna to refer to delta x as the adjacent side. We no longer need to use delta y and delta x. Instead, for consistencies, we're gonna use opposite and adjacent. So there you go. Those are the three trig functions that you can use for a right triangle when you're trying to determine an unknown side and you know an angle and one other side. It's that math magician, and I'll see you on the next video.